Our scripture comes from Matthew chapter 6, verses 30 through 32. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So don't worry saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. Thank you, God, for the inspiration of this word. Amen. Welcome to our reflection on Sunday. My name is the Reverend Michael Drew Davis, and I want to pick up on our conversation that we are having on Sunday about dear friends and situations that they can't change. I want to talk about dear friends that hear the words, O oh, ye of little faith, and feel forgotten and ignored because they exist within a living reality that cannot be changed, that is an anchor that slows them down, that limits them from progressing. And what it means to exist in, the, in that reality and finding a new way. I want to share with you two examples today of Jesus Christ dealing with a situation that cannot be changed and dealing with a situation that just needs to be cared for, that has a person beckoning for help, and Christ creates a new way without changing the situation. When we look at all ye of little faith, stuck in situations that cannot change, how does Christ still change the environment and make it better for the individual? So we're going to look first at Matthew 15. We're going to look at Matthew 15, verses 21 through 28. And we're going to see an individual dealing with a situation they cannot change, dealing with a source of a division that they cannot change, but Christ changing the environment so that they can progress forward. Faith of a Canaanite woman. Leaving that place, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman from that vicinity came to him crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is demon-possessed and suffering terribly. Jesus did not answer a word. So the disciples, our good buddies, our good old scar-ridden, bruised friends, the disciples, so his disciples came to him and urged him, send her away, for she keeps crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. Christ has presented the difference, the varying culturals, the, the, the divisiveness between cultures, the division between cultures, the separation between cultures. The Canaanite woman and the people of Israel, Christ is presenting that. I was only sent to the lost sheep of Israel. The woman came and knelt before him. Lord, help me, she said. He replied, it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Christ takes the divisive, the division language and throws it. Not that he believes in it. The Christ of sarcasm. Sometimes sarcasm is used to push another person to show their real intents, to express their true feelings, which happens in this instance. Yes, it is, Lord, she said, but even the dogs eat from the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus said to her, Woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. And her daughter was healed at that moment. On Sunday, we talked about individuals that deal with, with things that are outside of their control. We talked about dear friends with emotional issues, with anxiety issues, with different uh, intellectual 
um, cognitive delays, intellectual delays, and there are things they, they can't fix, they can't change. And we talked about this concept that I always rooted for, because I always like the word, the concept of being differently abled. And Christ presents a, an image of becoming differently able. Christ doesn't change the situation. There's still cultural division that exists. There's still gender that gender divisions that exist within this conversation. We see within the disciples' initial response the cultural discrepancy that exists in this situation. Christ highlights it before he makes his major statement that tears down a wall of barrier. Christ says he shouldn't take from the children and toss it to the dogs. Christ uses the divisive language to highlight what's about to happen. But it is the faith of the Canaanite woman that she sticks to it, no matter the cultural division, no matter the gender divisions. She sticks to her faith and she goes to the master's table to ask for just a scrap of a blessing. And Christ rewards it. Christ does not change the gender understandings because they still exist today. Christ doesn't change the cultural division because it still exists today. But Christ, through highlighting, acknowledging, expressing the division, points towards a major blessing in you get to eat at the master's table. The blessing still comes along. Let's think about that when we go back to our phrase, oh, ye of little faith, and how that phrase, oh, ye of little faith, can be destructive at times. There's this lady was born a Canaanite. She cannot change that. This lady was born with the sexual identity of a female. So she can't change how she presents. And she goes and crosses all these ba barriers, divisive between cultural histories, divisiveness of who has a voice within the culture, and she steps out within those limitations and finds still a new way to address things with Jesus Christ. And Christ, still with the cultural divisions existing, still with the gender divisiveness existing, still creates an opportunity for the blessing. How do we do that for the ones that hurt when we hear the phrase, when they hear the phrase, O oh, ye of little faith. How do we do that for the ones that direly just want to receive a blessing in their lives? And they exist within delays, barriers, hindrances, anchors that can't be changed. They have all the faith in the world but it's not going to change what they're dealing with. We change the environment around it. And Christ changed the environment around her by, one, being the person who listened. It's very pivotal. There's two things that happen. When we look at verse 23, Jesus did not answer a word. That phrase is more powerful because there's two things that happens. There's two doors that answer, that are opened in that silence. One, it opened a door for the disciples to show how they were going to screw up again. And they do. <laughs> and it also leaves the door open. If I don't respond, what is your response? If I don't respond, what is your response? So Jesus sits there quiet, existing in this environment with factors in it that cannot be changed or altered. Jesus is sitting in this environment. She comes over, my daughter is demon-possessed and suffering terribly, and Jesus doesn't say anything. So the disciples walk through the door. Hey, Jesus, send her away. Her cry, she keeps crying out to us. Let, let me let me add the Drew Davis vernacular to that. Hey, get lost, 
and leave me alone. Send her away. She keeps crying out after us. So they responded. So Jesus needs to make sure that the Canaanite woman knows that the door of conversation is still open. So he opens it a little bit further. I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. So the lady sees her way to walk through the door. The woman came and knelt before him. Lord, help me, she said. And the, Jesus is still pushing it. He's trying to see. Does she understand? Does she understand? And Jesus keeps the my Jesus, and I celebrate this Jesus. My Jesus, the Christ of sarcasm, continues that path. It is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Sarcasm. Yes, it is, Lord. Even the dogs eat from the crumbs that fall from the master's table. And Jesus said to her, Woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. There's a powerful moment that happens in this moment of silence that Jesus presents. And it's empowers. It's a moment of empowerment. He, <laughs> he literally empowers the disciples to shove their feet in their mouth again by being the first ones to speak up and say the wrong thing. Hey, she's bothering us, send her away. But Jesus uses that open door for this lady one more time to display the faith and the actions that Jesus Christ can only provide. And Jesus Christ grants it with a blessing. I want us to think about that because we exist. I, I think about the phrase that we looked at on Sunday. And I think about this phrase, O oh, ye of little faith. Now, when I hear that phrase and when I hear individuals say it around me, it's a blow-off statement. It is not a motivating statement at all. It's a blow-off statement. It's a leave-me-alone statement. It's a this is your problem, it's not my statement. When I hear someone say, if you had more faith, if you prayed harder. If you went to church more, these things would change. First of all, none of those things are factual because as we talked about on Sunday morning, we exist in a world with documented emotional issues, anxiety issues. We exist in a world that has cognitive delays and intellectual delays. And Christ God bless those things exist and they don't just go away praying. And they don't just go away because they're not bad. And I wish that I thought about this Sunday, but the statement that I'm about to make works so much more with this scripture today about the Canaanite woman. We have individuals who come to us as they are, the beautiful creations that they are. So I want to repair something before I have to do another sermon in three months about all this scripture again, again. I don't feel that cognitive delays are bad. I don't feel that intellectual degree, uh, delays are bad. I don't feel that anxiety issues are bad. They, they are realities in the living identities of beautiful, beautiful people that God has made beautiful and whole with their anxiety issues, with their cognitive delays, with their intellectual delays. Everyone is still a beautiful, beautiful creation, and God wants the body to help the body find its path of growth. So when I think about it this way, when I think about it, well, what what are we going to do with the person with developmental disabilities when they come to church will invite them to church. I had a beautiful, beautiful experience at my former appointment. We had a group of dear friends uh, with developmental disabilities. We had a Sunday school class, but they all came to church and we all sat together in church and their experiences made church better. Because there was one dear friend, her, her, her documented disability 
had some vocal components to it. Sometimes she spoke during the sermon. But I tell you, that when she spoke during the sermon, it was some of the more powerful moments. And it actually added and it accentuated moments of the sermon. Because I remember one time making a statement that I was worried about. And I say, Jesus is Lord, no matter who we love and no matter who we no matter who we love and no matter where we go. And out of nowhere, I heard, uh oh. <laughs> and it just added to the experience. It made it more beautiful. So here's why I'm saying all this. I'm going back to the disciples in the scripture. The disciples put this wall of division up and, oh, well, this person's different, so they need to go away. This person. They can throw with the platitude, oh, ye of little faith, and send them away. And all, all those things do is hurt an individual so that they never look for a seat at the table of Jesus Christ. And when Christ has this person right at the table, Christ very intentionally is teaching the disciples, give them their spot. See, I don't think that Christ is speaking even though it opens the conversation with the Canaanite woman, I don't think that Christ is speaking to her when he says, I was sent here only to the lost sheep of Israel. I really think that he's catching the disciples' attention. I mean, honestly, wow, Jesus is agreeing with me. I better pay attention. I better listen. And then she knelt down before him, Lord, help me. And he says, it is not right for me to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. I think the disciples' their ears are getting wider and wider. Oh, he's agreeing with me. We better pay attention. And when he, they are completely paying attention, Christ drops the ha hammer. You have great faith. Your request is granted. And then they hear the reality of the statement. I just hope that we hear the reality of this statement. I hope that we hear the reality that instead of throwing out a platitude, pray harder, go to church more, serve harder, that we have dear friends that need us to be on a journey with them. And instead of saying, oh, ye of little faith, pray harder, worship harder, go to church more, spreading those platitudes, just like the disciples saying, please send her away, that we actually open up doors that opens up opportunities to build relationships, to respect individuals on the journeys that they are on and truly show them that even with the anchors in their lives, they can be anchored at the table of God's love. I was going to talk a little bit about the Apostle Paul, too. I might do that in another video, but I think that's enough for this one. Thank you for going through this conversation with me. My name is the Reverend Michael Drew Davis. May the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. God is love. Amen. We'd like to have the opportunity to get to know you. Please email us at ncumcinfo at gmail.com. And if you've been enjoying our services online, please email us. Please say hello. Again, that's ncumcinfo at gmail.com. And also, if you'd like to give to our church, please go to northcoastumc.org and click on the Give button. Again, that's northcoastumc.org and click on the Give button. Thank you for joining us.